Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about retinoids, which is one of my favorite ingredients in the derm world. So my name is Dr. Swati Cannon and I'm a board certified dermatologist, a skin cancer surgeon, and a cosmetic dermatologist out here in California. I just started this YouTube channel recently to have real discussions about evidence-based skincare secrets. So to actually make this video for you guys on retinoids, I even pulled out my giant dermatology textbook. Uh, this is just volume two. There's another one that's volume one that's just as big and we had to read these books plus more in residency all three years. So while everyone was partying on a Friday night, I was nerding out. But with that being said, why do we need retinoids? Well, retinoids are the foundation of skincare in terms of anti-aging, acne, and skin discoloration. Just to preface this before I even start, do not use it if you're getting pregnant, trying to get pregnant, or breastfeeding. In order to understand how retinoids work, let's take a look at normal skin anatomy. So it's composed of three layers. You have an epidermis, which is the topmost layer of the skin, the dermis, which is the middle component, and then what's called the subcutaneous tissue, which is where we have our fat, and then underneath we have muscle, things like that. But the skin is just made up of the first three layers that you see on this diagram here. The dermis, or the second portion of the skin, is where we have our collagen. As we age, starting in the mid-20s for women, and a little bit later for men, we start having decreased collagen production. Collagen is the main structural protein that's within our skin and in a lot of other parts of our bodies that gives us strength and structure, and it's what makes that young skin look tight, plump, and youthful. So retinoids actually help with increased collagen production over time so that we can maintain a more youthful and glowy appearance. Retinoids also help with increased cell turnover. That means that the cells come to the surface faster. Because the cells come to the surface faster, they also shed off faster, and that's why you get peeling. People often confuse this with exfoliation, but the retinoid peeling is not exfoliation. Exfoliation, either chemical or physical, is when we get rid of dead skin cells. But for retinoids, we're just increasing how fast the basal layer of the cells come to the surface. Now, because of the increased cell turnover, you also get decreased clogged pores, meaning you have a decrease in the microcomodone, and microcomodones are the precursor to acne, uh, both inflammatory and non-inflammatory. So if we decrease how many microcomodones we're producing, this in turn helps us with the acne. And in addition, retinoids also help with skin discoloration. Melanocytes, which are your pigment producing cells, they live in like the basal layer of the skin. These usually provide pigment to the skin cells called keratinocytes. But when your cells are turning over really fast, the melanocytes don't have enough time to give the pigment over to the skin cells. And this is how you get an improvement in the skin discoloration uh, when you use retinoids. But on the contrary, if you use too much retinoid and you get too much inflammation or irritation, this can lead to discoloration because of it. So you really want to start low, meaning start at a low strength, and then increase your weight slowly into the retinoid game. Lastly, retinoids also help with epidermal thickness. This means that the top layer of the skin gets thicker, which is helpful as we age because our skin actually thins down. Simultaneously, retinoids decrease the thickness of the stratum corneum. Stratum corneum is the topmost layer of our skin composed of dead cells. So what's happening is that we get thicker skin with fewer dead cells, so you get that more youthful, glowy appearance. Now that we know why retinoids are so wonderful, what exactly are they? Well, retinoids are a vitamin A based molecule and they come in many different forms. And that's why I think it's so confusing because you have so many different forms of retinoids that are available. So over the counter, you have retinol esters, gran active retinol, retinol, retinol to hide. On the prescription strength, you get retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is the strongest form and the most effective form of retinoid. It also is the most irritating. The most common form of retinoic acid is tretinoin, and this is also known as retin-A, and this is what we commonly use in the derm prescription world. In terms of over-the-counter products, retinol is the most over-the-counter form. It gets converted to retinol to hide, which then gets converted to retinoic acid. Because it takes two steps to convert from a retinol to a retinoic acid, your retinol is inherently a little bit weaker and more gentle. So here's kind of the general chemistry behind retinoids. The retinol ester gets converted to a retinol, which gets converted to a retinol to hide, which then goes into a retinoic acid. The retinol ester is weaker, the retinoic acid is stronger. The retinol ester is gentler, meaning less irritating. The retinoic acid is much more irritating. And then grand active retinols are just a different form of delivering the retinoic acid ester into the skin. 
And the Grand Active Retinol is a little bit weaker in terms of efficacy, but it's also more gentle. And the Ordinary brand really made this form of retinol much more popular. I have used this personally and I do like it. I also recommend it to a lot of my beginner or sensitive skin patients. It is kind of like a stepping stone to then move on to stronger, more effective forms of retinoids. But the goal here isn't to use the strongest, baddest retinoid for your skin. The goal is to use a retinoid that you can consistently stick to so that you get the most benefit. So how do you choose the one that's right for you? Well, if you have oily skin, you can actually use a retinoid serum or even go all the way to prescription strength retinoids. If you have combination skin, I usually recommend a cream over a serum just to be a little bit on the safer side. And you can start with the over-the-counter retinol before progressing to a prescription strength retinoid. Now, if you have dry, sensitive skin, this is the toughest skin type when it comes to starting a retinoid. And that's because retinoids can make your skin even drier and more peeling. So in this case, I usually recommend that patients increase the hydration level of their dry skin first. That means you start with hyaluronic acid serums and moisturizers with ceramides and peptides. And then once your skin is well hydrated, you can then start with the very gentle retinoid. And I'll kind of go over which ones I like for the various skin types. Before we go over some of the over-the-counter retinoids, I do want to start with a few tips on how to use a retinoid. So I recommend using retinoids actually at nighttime. After you double cleanse, you can either have damp or dry skin. A damp face makes retinoids penetrate faster, so it makes them more effective, but also more irritating. You basically apply a pea-sized amount and go dot 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 and rub it all over the skin. You don't want to use any more than a pea-sized amount because again, you're just increasing the level of irritation. After the retinoid has soaked into the skin, you then apply a moisturizer on top. And this is kind of the basic regimen for anyone using a retinoid. You clean your face first, you apply the retinoid, and then a moisturizer on top. Initially, for everyone, including patients who have oily skin, you want to start using a retinoid two to three times a week for about three to four weeks. Let your skin really get used to it. Don't rush the process. You know the skin is used to it when it's no longer burning or sensitive or overly dry and peeling. Even with chronic retinoid users, you're still gonna have some peeling here and there, especially like around the eyes or around the mouth, but you shouldn't have too much peeling. And that's when you know that you're used to it. Ooh, this little top is itchy. <laughs> then slowly add one night every two weeks. You may not be able to use a retinoid nightly and that's completely okay. A lot of people just use retinoids five times a week and then give themselves a break on the weekend. I personally only use it four times a week and that's good enough for me. Don't use other chemical exfoliators like glycolic acid or physical exfoliators like beads and scrubs while you're using retinoids because it can actually make the irritation worse. And I know that when there's peeling, we just want to get rid of the peeling. But the best way to get rid of the peeling is either to have somebody dermaplane your skin or to just use a lot of moisturizers. For dry skin, I recommend the retinoid sandwich method. So after cleaning the skin, you leave it a little damp. And then you want to use a lightweight hyaluronic acid moisturizer. I really like, I have to pull this out, I really like the Neutrogena one. Um, this is the Hydra Boost Gel and it's super lightweight and just kind of, super lightweight and just kind of really creamy and it just dissolves into the skin so nicely. So you use a gentle lightweight moisturizer and just let it soak into the face completely, let it dry. Then you use a pea-sized amount of your gentle retinoid to the whole face, let it dry. And then you use a thicker moisturizer on top. I personally really like the First Aid Beauty one. So this is the Ultra Repair Cream for, for, from First Aid Beauty. And it's super thick, um, kind of just really moisturizing. I use it on my face, on my neck. And so this is personally the method I use for my uh, retinoid regimen. I use the retinoid sandwich, which is moisture, retinoid, moisture. The other rules still apply. So you'll do the retinoid sandwich using a gentler retinoid, two to three times a week, and then slowly increasing use as tolerated. Now for acne or hardcore anti-aging, I actually prefer prescription retinoids over over-the-counter ones. But you can still start with an over-the-counter one and then just work your way up to a prescription strength. To get a prescription, I do recommend doing a visit or a telederm visit with a dermatologist as we can guide you through the dreaded retinoid irritation, also called retinoid dermatitis, which is when you get pretty severe irritation and inflammation use from using a retinoid, and for this, we even have to give a prescription strength topical medication sometimes. Now, here are some of the over-the-counter retinoids that I recommend. I already talked about this one before, but The Ordinary makes a Grand Active Retinol Serum with squalene. This one is well tolerated by most of my patients. Like I said, it's a stepping stone towards stronger retinoids, and it's really great beginner retinol for a lot of people who have dry or sensitive skin. 
for acne, I actually have a previous video where I talk about the retinoids I like for acne, but I mainly like Adapalene, which is over-the-counter different, or La Roche-Posay also makes one. Other over-the-counter retinols that I like are the CeraVe Retinol Resurfacing Serum. This one contains encapsulated retinol, ceramide, and niacinamide. Despite the ceramides that are in this retinol, I do think that this one is a little bit stronger, so I usually recommend this for oily skin or combination skin. The Rock Retinol Correction Cream. This one has retinol, vitamin C and E, and hyaluronic acid. I do think that this one still tends to be a little bit more irritating, so I recommend this for patients who have oilier skin and who are really looking for that anti-aging benefit. The Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Retinol Serum. This one's also better, I think, for normal to combination skin. The First Aid Beauty Retinol 0.25% Serum. This one is only 0.25% retinol, so it's a little bit less strong, and it also contains hyaluronic acid, oatmeal, and ceramides. So I think this one is really great for dry and sensitive skin. This is a great beginner retinoid. The Elastin Renewal Retinoid is also 0.25% retinol, and this one's also really great for beginners and dry to sensitive skin. Now, all these effects of retinoids take a long time. For acne, it takes two to three months to see an effect, and initially you're gonna have that purge-like reaction. Because retinoids increase cell turnover, all the acne that you had underneath the skin that was gonna come out in a few months is now gonna come out in a few weeks. For anti-aging, it takes about six months. So patience really is key. All right, so that's what I have for retinoids today. One quick thing about a similar ingredient called Bakushiol. This is a plant-based alternative that has similar effects to retinoids, but they're not the same. Bakushiol is supposed to be gentler and can also be safely used in pregnancy. So I, that's why I think it's a really great alternative to mention. I personally have tried and liked the Herbivore Bakushiol Serum, but it's definitely less effective. And I do think that products that contain both Bakushiol and retinoids tend to be more effective. So this is my second video, so please give me feedback if the audio, the video, the background, the, or the lighting of anything needs to change. Was the above information too much, too little, too fast, too slow? Let me know because this channel is really for you. I was originally inspired to get on social media by my patients, and so here I am. And I really want to make this channel entertaining, yet educational, and easy to watch. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week, and stay tuned for videos every one to two weeks. So like, comment, and subscribe.